Good morning, SSM. I've always wanted to say that. That was on my bucket list, so now I can scratch it off. <laughs> but I am looking for certain key people that I told to sit up front. Where you at? Oh, okay then. All right, good, good, good. I said all that before telling you my name. I am Yvette Battle, and I am, as he mentioned, a senior AP clerk for System Finance located in Creve Coeur, Missouri. And that's the first time I've ever been introduced by somebody, so thank you. I feel special. <laughs> I am passionate about ministering to others and trying to live out the mission and values of SSM Health, not just at work, but in my community, with my family, friends, and neighbors. I believe we all have a purpose, and sometimes we find it through unexpected circumstances. It's been a long time since I had to deliver a speech in front of a large group, and the last group was not this large. So it takes me back to my younger days in church with my grandmother. Those days you could be asked to speak on the spot, and your granny would not let you say, I can't. In fact, you got pinched if you didn't move fast enough. <laughs> Grandmothers always saw the potential in you that you didn't know you had. I am the oldest of nine, so I learned at an early age how to be in charge or take charge. But my real challenge in life really starts many years later when I was an adult and began taking care of my dad. My dad was a tall, handsome man, full of pride and determination. There he is. That was a Father's Day gift. He liked to go stand at the ponds and look at the fish that he didn't catch. <laughs> so we got him a hat with all the fishing tackles on it. <laughs> but one day it came to a sudden halt. He had fallen. He couldn't get up, and he had been on the floor for a very long time before he could reach the phone to call for help. MES, uh, MES had to break the front window to get to him. That day changed both our lives. I put off moving in with him for a while. I, after all, I had my family, my life, my way of doing things. I just couldn't picture me taking care of dad. After all, he was the parent, he was the oldest. How could it be that the tables had turned? I was not mentally or emotionally ready for the task. But one morning, I felt my grandmother pinching me, and I knew what I had to do. It was not easy, and there was days I just wanted to give up. I had to bathe him, run his household, take care of his finances, and then I had to learn how to feed him through a feeding tube. There were no instructions, no books to read, no one to consult, it was all done by trial and error. But God opened the door and sent me some help through my children, nieces, and two of my sisters. They took turns looking after him while I was at work. And I had promised my dad that I would never put him in a nursing home. On the last trip to the hospital, the social worker felt he needed more care than what I could give him at home. I was tore up inside. Even though the situation was trying at times, I still was not going to put my dad in a nursing home. Just as I was about to give my resignation so I could stay at home with him, God stepped in again, and he took dad home so I did not have to make that choice. This journey with my dad led me down another road that I had not expected. While taking care of him, I started going to the town hall meetings um, in the city where we lived. After a while, I was asked to sit on the board because there was an opening at the time. I said yes, not really thinking that they would choose me, but lo and behold, they did, and I've had that seat now for three terms. I want to share with you some of the ways I have been able to make a difference in my community, at least I hope I have. The service that I'm most proud of is my gift of sewing. I am a dressmaker, besides other things, and for the last four years, I have put on a fashion show with outfits that I have made. I have received tremendous support from my coworkers. Some of them are models in the fashion show, 
and we have a blast putting this thing together each year. This year we're holding a sophisticated all-white fashion show. My purpose is to show women and young ladies the styles that could be best suited for them. In my younger days, we used to say, everybody can't be Twiggy. <laughs> now, everybody can't be Giselle or Tyra Banks. <laughs> so I use the everyday woman of different frames to showcase styles for the everyday woman. My models keep their outfits and I also give away outfits. These are things that they would never have thought to buy in the store. The city board also, which is the alderman board that I belong to, we help the community members in need during the holiday season. We take up donations to purchase toys for the local children. And this year, I got a chance to play Santa. I hit every Walgreens in the city. Let me tell you, they got the best deals on toys, if you're ever looking. It was such a pleasure to see the joy on the children's faces. It didn't matter if it was wrapped or not. They were so happy just being able to choose what, they really, what really appealed to them. So many times we give what we think is best for a person. And to some degree that may work. But other times it's best to let them make the choice. I think it makes them feel more self-worth and it may instill a sense of pride knowing that they were able to make a choice. The board also take up donations to prepare Thanksgiving dinners for our elderly residents. When we deliver the meals, we get to sit with them for a spell and lend a listening ear. It is at this time I realized how important it was for me to move in with my dad. Just to think about a person sitting alone for days at a time with no interaction with another person, it just makes me shudder. So I'm more than happy to be able to bring a little sunshine, if only for a few minutes. With that in mind, I'm working on starting a group known as Seniors Helping Seniors. I hope to get senior volunteers that are still able to get around, and together we provide aid to those who can't. It may be something as small as picking up their favorite item from the store, reading a newspaper, or sitting on the front porch drinking a cup of tea with them. Believe it or not, they really appreciate that. It may seem small to us, but it's a big deal to them. Um, we're all in this life a journey together. All of us would need someone at some point of time, and no one, no one, should ever feel alone or abandoned. This is my dream. I try my best to be a good service and to lead by example. My kids say I do too much. That's because they want to use up my time. <laughs> but I feel the need to help. Maybe this is my purpose. Most recently, I was given Martin Luther King Jr. Political Service Award. That's me on the left. My hair is different now. <laughs> And it was presented to me by Martin Luther King III in person. That was a beautiful feeling. I can't describe it. And it proved to me that I do and I can make a difference. I believe we all have a purpose. We just have to open our hearts and our eyes. And in all that I have said today, I hope that someone will hear the most important message that no matter how far the world has progressed with modern technology, we still need to extend a human touch. Whether it's in our work or in our communities, those connections, however large or small, can make all the difference in a person's life. And we all have the power to heal the person around us by being present whenever we, need, we see a need. Thank you so much. And I thank the committee for inviting me.